Hello, sixth graders. Welcome back to Weather Patterns. This is for lesson 3.3, and this lesson is really all about using your knowledge that you've learned in the entirety of the Weather Patterns unit to write a scientific argument about what's going on with the weather in Galetown. So I'm just going to briefly walk through this lesson so that everybody's clear on what you're supposed to be doing. So if you have a packet from the website or from Schoology, you will notice that it's talking about the three claims that we've been discussing in each chapter. So claim one, the lake was built that was built near Galetown caused it to have more severe rainstorms. Claim two, warmer weather caused Galetown to have more severe rainstorms. And claim three, stronger winds caused Galetown to have more severe rainstorms. So each of the chapters of this unit has focused on looking at evidence for each of these claims. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can make the story complete and put all of the pieces together and figure out what exactly is going on. So your job in this packet, here's where we start, 3.3 part one discussion. There's a warm up where you're gonna look at some data and answer some questions. So we're just reviewing wind in this warm up, which we spent um, 3.1 and 3.2 focusing on. So you'll have an opportunity to think about wind and then whether or not you think it's impacting the amount of rain. And then the big part of this particular lesson is preparing and writing a scientific discussion. So it is quite possible that you believe that all of these claims have affected Gale Town and its rain, or maybe you really feel more strongly about one or two of them. So you're gonna think about what you think we have good evidence for, and then you're gonna start writing. All right, so I'm just gonna do a quick review about our CER. So the claim, remember, is your inference. What are you thinking? Using your brain, I'm using my brain, Mr. Barrio is thinking that a good claim might be warmer weather caused Gale Town to have more severe rainstorms. And then my evidence is my observation. So this is not my thinking. This is just what I can see or read or touch or smell from a data table, from my observations. And then the reasoning is where I put it all together. So this is thinking again. This is where I figure out how the evidence backs up the claim that I made. And then I use my statements of therefore and since or because, and I connect the dots and put it all together. First part of this is where you write your claim. You can use one of the three claims that we went over a little bit ago, or you can write up your own claim. It can be your own ideas. You just wanna make sure that you're using this claim checklist so that you're phrasing it correctly. So we're not using I think statements, we're making a strong statement. We're trying to answer the question, which is what's going on with the weather in Galetown? Are these things, what's causing more severe rain? And then we're using a complete sentence. So down here we even have a little example. Ta-da! Blank, this is what you're thinking, caused Gale Town to have more severe rainstorms this summer than in previous years. So I made an example earlier about the warmer weather, but you could decide that it's a different factor that you want to argue, or you could decide that multiple factors influence the weather in Gale Town. If you're deciding that it's multiple factors, though, you need multiple pieces of evidence to support that. So my claim could be different than your claim, could be different than Ruby's claim. All right, it's totally fine to have different claims. What we want to do is make sure that we're supporting our claim with evidence and then explaining it with reasoning. So here's where you write your evidence. We always want to use sentence starters whenever we're writing evidence, reasoning, claims. We want full, complete sentences. So we've given you some sentence starters. And remember that we also need to include our source. Where do we get this information? So some examples of evidence that we might pull from, data tables, the SIM, articles that we've read. So those are all great sources of evidence for this particular activity. And then we also down here, if you'll notice, again, there's places to check your work in each of these sections. Here's a checklist. Did you do all these things? Hopefully you can say check, check, check. All right, so this is where you put your evidence. And for our activity today, you need one piece of evidence for this activity. 
right here. It says one, one piece, but you can write more pieces if you want to. That just makes your argument stronger. All right, so our home stretch now, we're going to talk about the reasoning. Okay, this is where we connect the dots. We explain how our evidence supports the claim that we make. And again, we have our little sentence starters or our transition words. This means, therefore, since, and then there's space for you to write your thinking. And this is where you also can use the science to connect it. So explaining what you've learned about weather and clouds and rain and air parcels to help explain why the evidence that you chose supports your claim. And this really should be the longest section of all the sections. And once you've written your claim, your evidence, and your reasoning, then we're going to share it with our other scientists, classmates, and the community is going to review it. All right, so how do you do that? So you're going to go to Schoology. Hopefully everybody has access to Schoology now. I know they handed out laptops recently, so hopefully everybody has a way to get online. If for some reason you don't, that's okay. You can talk to your family or friends um, that are conveniently located near you in your house, um, or you can talk to your pet or your stuffed animal and share your claim. But we want you to practice making the scientific argument. So in Schoology, and I'll pull up Schoology in just a minute, you're gonna have a discussion section where you're going to post your thinking, your argument, and then later on, you're gonna have an opportunity to respond to somebody else's thinking. All right, so I pulled up my Schoology page. This is for one of my classes. Your Schoology page might look a little different, but what we're looking for, if you're doing the scientific argument on Schoology, is you'll see these little bubbles, all right? And it should say something about scientific argument about Gale Town. And it'll give you your prompts, what you're supposed to do. And then you click on it, ta-da! And then it will open up a space for you to write. So right here, you'll type your comments. So you'll type everything that you wrote down. You'll type your claim, your piece of evidence, or your multiple pieces of evidence, and your reasoning. And then you will hit the post button, and then you will wait. And the next day, you'll go back in, and you will provide some feedback or some thinking on somebody else's post. And if you're looking through the packet, you will see that the page that's talking about the discussion says, by the end of today, you will have completed the following. So here's a little checklist. On Schoology, you'll find the discussion. You'll type your information. We just looked at that. And then you'll write a thoughtful comment or question to at least one other classmate. And here's some examples of things you could say. This makes me wonder. I would like to add on to that or build on that. Or can you tell me more about what you're thinking? And then... Optional, but really interesting, there is an article in this packet about types of rain that you could read after you're done with all of your discussion and your posting. Congratulations, you have reached the end of this packet and chapter three, and that is the end of the content for the unit about weather patterns. So for each individual class in school, you might be doing a different assessment next week, or maybe you'll be done and you'll be moving on to your new unit. But it's been great working with you on weather patterns. Until next time, see you later.